today is the first Sunday of, of the Lent, as we all know. And uh, the first Sunday is the, the end of the week, actually. The end of the first seven days in the Lent. Um, this Sunday is called the Treasures Sunday. And the first, actually, uh, couple of verses in today's gospel, the gospel of uh, St. Matthew, chapter 6. Um, it starts with, like, uh, in 6, 19, 20, and 21. The gospel tells us, actually, our Lord says that uh, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Um, because the rust and the moth will destroy it and thieves will break in and steal. And he continues to say, um, you would rather um, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where no one can touch it. Um, neither moth nor rust destroys and thieves do not break in and steal. And then our Lord concludes that part, and he says that where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Of course, where my love is, where my concern is with my things that I, I am interested in, of course, my heart will be there. So, um, the one good thing that I can do, or any good deed that any of us does, it could be credited in one of two ways. It could be credited to me in heaven, and a heavenly reward, or I can just get my reward on earth, and it's not considered, at that point, a heavenly treasure. So, in last week, week's gospel, also chapter 6 of St. Matthew, our Lord um, said, whatever act I do, it, de it depends on um, my, my purpose of it or my attention of it. He says in the first verse in Matthew 6, 1, Take heed when you do a charitable uh, good deed, um, do not let others look at you. Do not make your purpose when, I, when you do something good that people will pay attention. Because he says, otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven because you already took the reward on earth and the people already praised you and said, you're a good man, you're a good woman, you're doing a good deed. And God said, at that point, you already, you already took your reward, so, so there is no heavenly reward. So I could be doing good things, but my purpose in my heart is to draw the attention of others to me, to get some praise and good, good reputation if this is a case, God will say, okay, you already, you already took your reward. So it's not, so that's why he said, um, lay up for yourselves heavenly treasures. But if I do it for the purpose of loving God and loving other people, then God will reward me because he says, God who, who sees in secret will reward you openly. So it's not the good deed in itself, but it's my heart behind it. If my heart is I'm doing that because I love God, God sees that and knows that, and he will reward me. But if I do it because I want to draw attention to myself, I want others to look at me and say, wow, you're a good person, 
you are a noble person, uh, which might be true, by the way. But then I already took my reward, and it's not considered a heavenly treasure. The thing is, we do all the time good things in front of other people. Like we come to the church today, and we all pray, and we see each other praying. There is nothing wrong with that. But the wrong that I may do if I am coming to the church to have others look at me, and that's my purpose. We do good deeds all the time. You see, you see someone in need on the street, and you give him something, you help him out, and other people are looking. There is nothing wrong with that. But if I'm doing it just to draw the attention of others, to get their praise, then it is not at that point a, heav a heavenly treasure, but actually it's an earthly, earthly thing, earthly treasure. Charit charitable deeds could be in the form of money, could be in other forms. On Judgment Day, our Lord in Matthew 25, he explained about charitable deeds and actually made it a very important factor for my eternal life. He said, the Son of Man in Matthew 25, um, 35, but before that he said, the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will set people apart. He will make a group on his right hand side and another group on the left. And he will say to the people on the right, come to me, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom of God. And he will say, why? He will say, because I was hungry and he gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. So actually, uh, God appreciates these charitable deeds very much to the point that he will mention them on Judgment Day. And he will make him an important factor because he will say to the people on the left, you did not feed me when I was hungry. You did not the opposite of, of that. And then they will ask him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and we didn't give you food? And he will tell him, because you didn't do it to my brethren, you haven't done it to me. So. Charitable deeds definitely are very important, and that's why the church reminds us during the Lent where because um, someone who is fasting is full of meekness and humble and tender heart towards God and toward other people. Is there a maximum and minimum for how much I should be donating to God? The minimum actually is mentioned in Malachi, Malachi 3.10, when God said, bring the tithes to me, all the tithes, just one-tenth of what of your income. And that's the minimum, just one-tenth. Bring the tithes to the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. His house is a church. And there may be food in my house. And he said, try me now in this. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, that's how much a blessing someone who is paying the tithes, which is even, they are even the minimum. If I will not open the windows of heaven 
for you and um, pour out for you um, such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. You will, uh, you will overflow with blessings. God will give us too much and so much when we give the tithes. What about the maximum? If, is there a maximum of how much we pay? It's mentioned in, in, in the Gospel of St. Luke 12, 33. Our Lord says, sell what you have and give alms. Uh, this way, provide yourself with money bags that don't, do not grow old. And a heavenly treasure, of course, that will be a heavenly treasure. A heavenly treasure that does not fail. So the maximum, it's a big range from the minimum, the tithes, to the maximum of all what you have, sell it and give to the poor. And some people, of course, as we all know in the history of the church, they actually did that. Saint Anthony the Great, he sold what he owned at that time, which was 300 acres of land. He sold it, gave money to the poor, and he went to live a life of monasticism. So does God count? And by the way, this is not just for money. Some people, they sell all what they have as far as their lifetime and dedicate the life to God in service, in worship, and uh, so it's not just money or material things, but also life. But the question here, does God count, does God consider, I gave 10 and somebody else gave 100, so it will be more favor to God because he gave more than I did. God has a different measure a little bit. One time our Lord was sitting and was in the temple and was watching people uh, paying money in the treasury. And he noticed people paying a lot of money and then he noticed a lady, a widow. We can find this in Mark 12, 44. He noticed the widow just paid probably a couple of cents. And God said, all of the other people paid out of their abundance. They had a lot and they paid a lot. But this lady paid all what she had, all her whole livelihood, everything she had. So even though she paid two mites, God considered that much, much more than probably the thousands of dollars that was paid at that time. So treasures are charitable deeds. Uh, during the Lent, God reminds us also with prayers. In the same chapter, chapter six, but in the beginning, like in six, five, he says, when you pray, again, he doesn't want me to make it a habit to do good things, to get the praise from the people. He says, when you pray, go into your room, and after you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place, because we don't see God physically. He's hidden from us because he's a spirit in the secret place. And, and God who sees in secret will reward you openly. So he says, when you praise, go into your room and close your door. And some people, they feel bad if they pray at home and the rest of the family members know they are praying. God didn't mean that. God, he meant if I pray 
for the sole purpose of attracting attention. But if I'm praying and other people see me, there is nothing wrong with that. As long as my purpose is God, and my purpose is not the praise of the people. So he says, you go inside, you close your door. You just want to say anything you do is pertains to the relationship that we have together. If people see that or don't see that, it doesn't matter. And he said, when you pray, address me as the Father. He is the creator. He is the people and talker to her. He is the almighty. He is the judge. But he said he loves the title Father. He said, when you address me, address me as the Father. When, and when you say Father, he said, our Father, not my Father. He's, of course, my Father. Every one of us, God is his and her Father. But he says, address me as our father because we are part of a group we are part of the church when you pray you pray for yourself and you pray for the rest of the people you pray for your brothers and sisters so he said when you uh, when you pray address me as our father and the very end the very last uh, verse we heard today he put a nice rule and he said, seek the, uh, first the kingdom of God. And nothing wrong with that. But he said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these will be added to you. He followed the same rule when he taught us our Father who art in heaven. This prayer has seven requests. The first three of them has to do with the kingdom of God. And the last four, they have to do with our uh, life on earth. So the first three requests and our Father who art in heaven, um, they have the word thy. Uh, yani you thy uh, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done for I come first and when God comes first in my life everything else goes well and the last four they have to do with us give us they all have us. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us. They are all, of course, good requests. But God said, put me first. If you put me first, everything else becomes blessed. The same rule, because the author of the prayer, Our Father, is the same author of the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments, you also find the first four pertains to the kingdom of God. And the last six, they have to do with our life on earth. In Exodus 20, can read quickly the, the Ten Commandments. You'll find the first four, like in verse 3. Uh, you shall have no other gods before me. So he's talking about the kingdom of God. You, sh you shall uh, make no carved images, yani no other gods besides me. And in verse 7, um, you shall take you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. يعني ما استعملش اسم ربنا without respect in any in any occasion. We use the name of God in prayers. We use the name of God when we read the Bi of God when we read the Bible. So he said, 
you don't use my name in vain. And number four, he said that remember the Sabbath day um, to make it, to uh, keep it holy. وبعدين الستة الباقيين the other six they have to do with us on earth honor your father and mother and do not murder do not commit adultery do not steal do not bear false witness do not <coughs> covet your neighbor's house he, he is up, applying the same rule, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will follow. When we ask for his kingdom first. So Siam, the Lent is connected to charitable deeds, also connected to prayer and um, also connected to purity. Yani in today's gospel, in verse 22, Matthew 6, 22, he said, the lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is good, all of your body will be full of light. And he said, if your eye is bad, the rest of your body will be full of darkness. What is a good eye and what is a bad eye? The eye has to do with purity. And the first epistle of St. John, chapter 2, verse 16. Kulena Arfin al Versta, it's a very common verse. Our Lord said, All that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. The eye, the lust of the eye could feed into the lust of the body. And the purity of the eye could feed into the purity of the body. The lust of the eye also could feed into the pride of life. يعني بشوف حاجات مثلا very expensive I want to get I want to own the most expensive car the most expensive house the most expensive clothes this is the pride of life so when my eye see the expensive things and desire to own them so the eye could feed into the pride of life in a good way or in a bad way. So that's why he said the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is good, the rest of your body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, the rest of your body will be full of darkness. Um, one last quick conclusion is fasting is a way of life. Yani finas but morrib mashakil and their way of approaching the problems is to fast. If we, we all know what happened with Esther and the book of Esther, when there was a conspiracy to kill all the Jews and her uncle asked her being the queen to approach the king and try to save her people and as you know, she told him that if I go to the king and I'm not allowed to, I'll be killed. It's against the law. Then he told her, if you don't do it, salvation will come from another place, but you will not be part of it. So she told her uncle and she sent him a message outside the palace in, in Esther 4:16. And she told them, go gather, gather all the Jews and fast for me. And she also told them, my maids and I will fast likewise. And, and as we all know, Rabbana halal mushkala. So fast, 
Fasting is a way of life, is a way of approaching difficulties. عشان كده تلاقي ان ان نينفه when um, Jonah told them, Jonah the prophet told them in, in, in Jonah uh, 3 4, he told them in 40 days Nineveh will be overthrown, shall be overthrown. So their behavior was, when we read the next verse 5, they believed God, yani they believed the message that Jonah gave them. They believed God, proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth um, and they repented. So fasting is tied to repentance, is tied to prayers, is tied to charitable deeds. And um, um, Joel, Joel, the book of Joel, or Joel, Joel 2, 12, there is a very famous verse about fasting that the Lord said therefore now therefore the Lord says um, like consecrate a fast turn to me with all your heart turn to me with turn to me with all your heart is is like when I give my heart to God I pray and I repent turn to me with all your heart with fasting with weeping and with mourning. Weeping and mourning, they have to do with repentance. Because when I regret my sin, even if I didn't weep with tears in my eyes, but I'm regretting it from the inside. So weeping and mourning, it's, it's like uh, repenting. So turn to me with all your heart, with fast and with repentance. And if I have the blessing, because not everyone is able to cry in prayers, if I have the blessing to cry, that's the only thing that God said it will overcome me. Your tears or my tears when we pray, in the book of Songs 6, 5, he said to the person who is standing before him and crying and asking for his forgiveness, for his help, for his blessing, he said, turn away. Turn away your eyes from me because they have overcome me. So uh, we ask the Lord with the prayers of Abuna, with your prayers to give us all a blessed fast to him is glory forever, man.